So in late 2015, a video emerged on YouTube which made it to <laughs> all of the major blogs. A gentleman by the name of Peter Curdy was expressing his disdain for Tiffany Pollard, aka Miss New York, and a lot of questions went unanswered such as, who is he? What is his connection to Miss New York? And what is the beef all about? Now in the video, he said Miss New York manipulates people. She makes promises that she does not keep. They were friends. She lived with him with her dogs. They made a huge mess around his house and that she lacked etiquette. He also said that she was a fake friend who basically betrayed him. So myself as well as other blogs were asking, who is Peter Curdy? What is the backstory to him and Miss New York's friendship? How did she betray him? You know, where did it all begin? What is this really all about? So I've been in contact with Mr. Curdy recently and I'm going to give you guys the true backstory. Now this is a Meat Magazine exclusive. No other blog, no other website has this other than at Meat Magazine on Twitter if you need to contact me and meatmagazine.blogspot.com. I'm the only person in the world that has this information. Now I have to make this a two part video. Part one, I'm going to show you the text messages between Tiffany and Peter Curdy. In part two, I'm going to let you guys know what Mr. Curdy's final thoughts are to Miss New York what he really wants from her and I'm gonna wow I'm gonna expose some tea that's so hot that I had to contemplate whether or not I even wanted to commit this to video so me making this video first gives me a little bit more time to decide whether or not I'm even gonna make the part two because it's that juicy I'm talking about other celebrities names were brought into it sexual escapades all sorts of stuff and I said man do I really want to make this video and as of right now I'm going to but in case I chicken out I'm gonna separate the information and make this video first so with that said let me make this disclaimer before I even get into the information first of all I'm not responsible for any information that, <laughs> that you're hearing in this video or that you read on my blog about Tiffany Pollard aka Miss New York and Mr. Curdy's relationship and I would like to thank Peter for giving me this exclusive information because no other blog or website out there has it. Now, if anybody needs to contact me for more information at Meat Magazine on Twitter or meatmagazine.blogspot.com. So here's the deal. Peter was working with Miss New York on a show called Botched. Himself, another guy named Antonio, and Miss New York were basically a team. They were a trio. And what had happened was Peter did a lot of different things, which I'm going to get into in the second video, where he basically helped out Miss New York in a lot of different ways. Pretty much she was down on her luck. She ran out of the money that she made, you know, 10 years ago or so when she had all these different shows. And when she was at her worst, Peter was there like a true friend doing whatever he could to make sure that she got back on top. And then, according to Peter, she basically stiffed him because once she got these new shows going you know the next 15 as well as family therapy with mrs patterson she pretty much moved on without them you know even though they were supposed to be a team you know how they say that there's no i in team and according to miss new york it seems like she is the i in team now with that said we're going to get into these text messages and emails and then in the part two we're going to wrap it up first of all miss new york said back in march of 2015 quote no problem and no worries I'm very sorry how everything went down too. I will get the dress back to you in a few weeks. I hope that helps. Also, the thing that is challenging for us both is the super duper small budget that we are working with for now. My mom and I have to buy staples out of it. Then the rest can be for clothing. If you decide to still do the project, then we can have a chat about specifics and I can give you $1,000 for your time. If you work with us, I'm thinking my mom and I will just return everything that is not gifted because she's afraid she's going to run out of clothes. I'm more concerned about her wardrobe than mine. My mom is the one who really needs all your attention. So this one goes back to 2014 in June. Tiffany says, hey Peter, it's Tiffany Pollard. Thanks for all the lovely pics. Would you like to be featured on a half hour segment on E! as my stylist? The producer, Diana Chang, said it taps this summer. 
To which Peter responded by saying, Hi, Tiffany. You were so, so welcome and wow, oh my God, yes. I would absolutely love to be featured as your stylist for the segment. Thank you so much. You have no idea how grateful I am. Tiffany also says, well, thank you for the awesome shoot you provided for me. All I need is for you to pull a lot of fabulous pieces. The more, the better. I don't have to put the clothes on, but they need to see I have a lot of designer pieces. And also, if you can pull that crown collection, that would be awesome in the segment. To which Peter responded by saying, okay, you got it. I can so make that happen. Crowns, you got it. I will pull literally a truckload of, and then the message cut off, but he goes on to say, anything specific? And when should I have everything by? We can do a fitting if you like to. To which Tiffany replied by saying, perfect. I have an interview with her today. We don't have a date yet, but it tapes this summer for sure. I will get you to date at least a 10 day in advance. Any well-known designers will do. All the well-known popular classic ones laughs out loud to which Peter responded by saying, perfection. Tiffany, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And this is, the message cut off, but he goes on to say, okay, sounds good. Talk soon. Hey, Tiffany, this is Peter. How are you? Question, do you have an idea of around the shoot date will be for the segment? Pulling fashions and the PR people just need an estimated shoot date so I can pull. Maybe a possible week of? P.S. Got you your crowns. Let me know. To which Tiffany replied by saying, Okay, honey. I'll see if I can get an update for you this week. Thanks, Peter. To which Peter responded by saying, No problem. Thank you so much, Tiffany. XOXO. Peter continues, I have more options for unveiling gowns. Also, I want to show you. I'll email pics of them to you. Tiffany responds by saying, You have a minute to chat, sweetie? Peter says, I do. Tiffany, after the brunch, I have a shot where they film me going shopping and trying on clothes. I want you to be in this shot because you are my stylist. With a frog emoji. <laughs> Hi. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Let's meet at Musso's and Frank in Hollywood at 1 p.m. That work? Then she gave the address to the place. That's where my meeting is. Maybe you come around 1.45 ish. Peter responds, okay, great. That's perfect. So one or 1.45 boo. And I'm looking forward to seeing you as well as always. Tiffany says, I love all my stuff. That pink jumper is sick. Thank you. Thank you. Love. Peter responds, ah, knew you would love that. It's actually a sample I designed. Tiffany says, yes, 145 is good because I have to talk numbers and we'll need a little privacy. Peter says, okay, great. Can't wait. Good luck, boo. Keeping my fingers crossed for a budget to work with. Then he laughs and says, if we got that, we're on point and trust. You've seen nothing yet, my loves, because the more we get, the more they give to you. And we like that. Laughs out loud. Tiffany responds, oh yes, I got you. And we'll make sure everything will be set for us, boo, with a frog emoji. Okay, so now that we've established a relationship between Peter and Tiffany, we're going to start getting into these emails now. This is going to let you know that yes, Peter was in fact involved with the reality TV shows, rather was supposed to be involved with the reality TV shows, but things fell through. Cannot wait to style you up in some fierce diva fashions. I will have an assistant for your needs on set to make this overall experience for you perfect. We are confirmed to shoot on March 29th, Saturday at 10 a.m. The studio space we have for the shoot is state-of-the-art amazing. Here is the studio website so you can take a look. We have the studio for 10 hours, so we have more than enough time to shoot several looks and take our time on the hair and makeup. Lunch and refreshments will be in the message cut off, so basically that's letting you know that once again they were in fact working together they were working on multiple things wow peter these things are impeccable can't express how truly excited i am also that's amazing that miriam came through on the hair this is so meant to be okay so that was tiffany talking to peter now we're going to get into these emails with jim kozloff from april of 2015. hello peter we are very pleased to confirm you to appear on thursday April 30th to 2015. 
Below is information regarding the upcoming taping. Shoot date and time, Thursday, April 30th to 2015 at 10.30 a.m. Tentative tape schedule. Now it says that there was a car that was supposed to pick him up and they were supposed to have the camera ready at 10. He would walk on set at 10.30. They would wrap at 11. It also goes on to let him know that he needs to avoid wearing stripes bright white or bright green so you can stand out and not blend in and we have a another message here between Jim and Peter where he was confirming the job it said that he would gross 1k he accepted the job he was very happy about it now it is really hard to see that because the the words on the screen were small but I'm gonna skip ahead and go to this next message Jim says hello Peter Will you be in Los Angeles November 23rd outgoing for a reality show that you may have heard of? Thanks so much, Jay Kozloff. Okay, now this message right here was from the email that was too small for me to read. It says, Peter, everything is working as planned. Your rate was just approved by the department. Your final rate is going to be 1K gross. Will you need a stylist? Which we hope you don't since you are one. We love you, PC. Thank you for everything. Your appointment is set and we'll set up care service tomorrow. Okay, here is Jim confirming that the show that they're talking about is the next 15. Hello, Peter. I'm glad you're still here in Los Angeles. Congrats on your fashion line and being part of Fashion Week in New York City. The reality show is titled The Next 15 on TV One. Since you know how this works, you can't mention nor contact anyone in regards to this email. We are a little unclear to what happened between you and New York. I feel this would make great TV to get you both on screen. Also, feature your collection on the show. We don't have the budget to bring you to Los Angeles if you're not here. The cast is Tiffany New York Pollard, Claudia Jordan, Laura Govan, Jennifer Williams, Jason Lee, Karamo Brown, and Benzino. Now, I have to interject right here. Jason Lee ended up not being a part of the cast when the show came on TV. However, he is the blogger from, I think it's Hollywood Unlocked. I'm pretty sure that that's his blog. He's the guy who threw the drink in Hazel E's face on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 2. For the record, that's Jason Lee. Yeah, so anyway, so that message was from November 13th of 2015. The next message says, Hello. Disregard the email I just sent you. It wasn't meant for you. We provide car service and food meals. We can't pay hotel stay since you're here in LA. Your role is to dish what you have on Tiffany and create drama against her. Also, you would need to use two or one girl to walk for a fashion show that we will plan and also invite Tiffany. We plan to get you to start filming by the end of this month. So let me interject here. They're basically saying that they were gonna manufacture some drama. They were gonna bring him on as the fashion stylist that he is. He would be playing himself, but he would know that the whole point of him being on the show, even though him and Tiffany are having problems, was to make sure that these problems would play out, were displayed on TV. So for the record, people, this is how TV really works. So yeah, the drama would have been real, but he would have known what he would have been there for. So if you heard Carlos King say that the next 15 was a real show and the drama on the show is real, I guess he was technically telling the truth <laughs> because just because they put somebody in the show, that doesn't mean that they're going to tell them what to say or what to do. Just you will be there. This is what you will be there for. To cause a disruption but we're not going to tell you exactly how to do it it's up to you so there you go people this is how tv works some of you may say that that makes reality tv phony some of you may like it back to the messages jim says okay peter we have confirmed both parties and now waiting on the location we are so happy that you can make this happen and grow your brand we cannot wait for the world to meet you i guess he meant to say see you we cannot wait for the world to meet you and give us the same light you have given in the past. Cheers to more to come. In the next message, he says, quote, Peter, 
Sorry for the late reply. Everything is confirmed tomorrow in Beverly Hills at the Masto Steakhouse. Please provide me with your address so we can set up your car service. See you tomorrow, Peter, and bring anything that is a part of your collection. This is, once again, November of 2015. He goes on to say, we want you as a pop-on this Thursday night, 7 p.m. I'm just waiting to confirm the shoot for that night. This was November 16th of 2015. Peter says, okay, keep me posted. Thanks. Wow, sounds like they were really interested in his fashion and, and were really interested in working with him. Anyways, finally, this message was to Antonio. Now, of course, Antonio is Peter's partner, so it says, Antonio, thank you for getting back to us. I understand that you didn't want to be a cast member of the show. We all was looking forward to your storyline, and we do respect your wishes. See you around, sir, and happy holidays, and it was signed JK or Jim Kozloff. Okay, now here's what Miss New York had to say online. She said, Actonia Jackson, proud of you. From the man behind the scenes, I say boss status as we usually do. No one understands us but us. Talking shit is what we do when need be, and handling business is what we do best. Hashtag we got next. Hashtag Area 5150 Entertainment. P.S. Ladies and gentlemen, watch out for these fake accounts. Someone or ones are highly disappointed on the successful situation occurring. Poor little babies. Maybe it's time to stop window shopping and actually get a job so you can understand what it is to work, not coattail your way in for a name in this business, but actually work for the things you want in life to create business. Now, let the hating begin. You've just been exposed. Hashtag sit your ass down and shut the fuck up and eat some turkey. Happy Thanksgiving. Hashtag take action. End quote. So there you go. Now, what did we learn here? We learned that Peter is who he says he is. He really was working with Miss New York. He really was going to be part of the next 15. They tried to bring him on the show to be in part of some, I guess some people would say a sketchy situation. I personally don't mind the fact that they were going to put him on the show like that to, you know, Miss New York is a very dramatic person. So it doesn't really surprise me that they would have somebody from her past like that. In her recent past at that, that was supposed to be a part of the show any damn way. So it doesn't really bother me. I don't think that really takes anything away from the next 15. I, I do believe that it is, in fact, one of the only real reality TV shows out there. You know, a lot of these reality TV shows are fake. They're not like game shows where you're obligated to follow these strict rules and guidelines and make sure that what people are seeing is legitimate. On a reality TV show, it doesn't have to be reality. It could be pretty much a scripted drama look if you look at the credits at the end of the reality TV show you might see eight people or ten people some people might say well of course you need writers you need writers because you need for the intro to be written or something like that but no <laughs> those people were coming up with storylines and pretty much piecing everything together you don't need ten writers to put together a reality TV show because it's supposed to write itself now, two or three makes sense because there are certain things, you know, like making sure little holes are filled in, like how did these two people meet and things like that. You have to kind of figure out an explanation for different things like, well, who is this person from your past that you mentioned? You got to contact them and figure out how you're going to fit them into the show. But it doesn't take 10 people to do all of that. But yeah, I think this is very interesting because not only does this expose Miss New York as being somebody who worked closely with Mr. Curdy and Antonio, but it also shows you that TV in general is not what a lot of people think it is. You know, they're putting on a show, so they have to do certain things to make sure that the show makes sense. It's as if the people who work behind the scenes are technically a part of the cast. Because if you left it up to the on screen talent, a lot of things would go unexplained. Reality TV can be confusing enough <laughs> with all the drama and everything that's going on. You know, if we didn't have these people helping to make it a show, could you imagine how much of a mess it would be? So, hey, I'm glad that they do help to guide the shows. I think it makes things better. A lot of you may say that that proves that reality TV is fake, but I would say no, it's not totally fake. But I know what's 100% fact, and that's Peter, Antonio, and Miss New York were a trio at one point 
These two guys should have been on the show. And we're going to get into exactly what happened in the second part. I didn't want to make a video too long. But I had to get those messages out there so people can see where it all began. Then it's going to all make sense in the second part. Wait for it. I decided I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. And once again, A, don't kill the messenger. Meet Magazine on YouTube, meetmagazine.blogspot.com. Follow me on Twitter at Meet Magazine. Miss New York, please don't kick my ass for what I'm about to post. Look out for part two. If you need a link to it, ask me for it in the comment section. Say, hey, where's part two? You won't want to miss it.